Hi, welcome to another essay writing video. Today we're looking at how to tell the difference between argument essay questions and discussion essay questions. If you find this video helpful, I encourage you to visit my website at IELTSIELTS.com. Let's start today's lesson by defining what an argument essay is and how it differs from a discussion essay. Basically, argument essays require you to find a position in your introduction paragraph and prove it throughout the remainder of your essay. So uh, there are a few small differences between argument essays and discussion essays, but the big difference is that the writer's point of view is delivered in different positions of each essay. In an argument essay, the writer's point of view is given at the beginning in the introduction paragraph. Now this is different from a discussion essay. Discussion essays analyze the positive and negative sides of an argument before presenting the writer's point of view. In discussion essays, the writer looks at the opinions of other people or, uh, as it says here, the positive and negative sides of an argument before presenting their own point of view. And the point of view comes in the conclusion. So in many ways, an argument essay is the inverse of a discussion essay. So the key to responding uh, to our essay question correctly is understanding what the essay question is asking us to do. All too often students they see a discussion essay question and they respond in an argument essay style or they see an argument essay question that maybe uses a word that makes them think it's a discussion essay question and you know this this leads to problems. This means that they didn't fully understand their essay question. So the key to responding effectively is understanding your essay question. Now basically all IELTS essay questions must have two parts. The first is some kind of background which includes things like the scope which is sort of like the the general um, topic of the essay and the keywords which uh, perhaps help to uh, pinpoint or um, narrow the scope a little bit and make it a little bit more specific. All IELTS essay questions also include a question portion which includes instruction words. Now instruction words can be words like discuss, argue, support, refute, analyze, uh, anything that sort of gives you as the the test taker an instruction that sort of commands uh, how you're going to respond to your essay question. So to illustrate this I've included an example here. Apples are better than oranges. Do you agree or disagree? Now in the simple example we can see that this portion is the background of the question apples are better than oranges. It includes our scope and it includes the keywords apples and oranges. The question portion is of course this second part here. Do you agree or disagree? Now the question is what is actually telling us to uh, or how to respond. So basically it's this question portion, the second portion of the of the entire uh, task that is telling us how to respond, whether we're going to respond in an argument essay style or whether we're going to respond in a discussion essay style. The top portion here, apples are better than oranges, uh, doesn't really tell us to do anything. It just sort of delivers an argument. And I think a lot of students maybe um, sometimes get a little bit confused and they think somehow that this top portion of the uh, of the task is uh, telling them to 
um, you know, telling them how to respond, but, but, you know, nine times out of 10, this is just, you know, delivering some kind of argument or some kind of position. And it's the second portion, the question portion that tells you how to respond. Okay, now, uh, to show you uh, an, uh, an example of this, a real example of this, and to show you how the question portion of the task can change the style of essay you will write, uh, I'd like to use this example, which is from the examination that was seen in China, the academic examination in May of this year. Okay, now let's uh, read the question together. The question reads, some people think that foreign visitors should be charged more than locals when visiting tourist attractions in a country. Do you agree or disagree? Now, um, I recently responded to this question as uh, using an example response in my blog. And uh, I had a few people that wrote me emails and they said to me, why did you respond in an argument essay style of essay when your question says some people think? So now what, what uh, happened was that these students, they didn't understand that the portion of the question here, some people think, is not really all that relevant to the way that we're going to respond to, uh, to this question. Basically, this entire first section is just showing us an opinion and it's not instructing us to do anything. So the, the sentence, some people think that foreign visitors should be charged more than locals when visiting tourist attractions in a country, this is not really telling us to, to write an argument essay or to write a discussion essay or to analyze anything or to discuss both points of view or to support anything or to refute anything. It's just an opinion. It's the second portion of the task that tells us what we're supposed to do. Do you agree or disagree? Now here, we're kind of being challenged with a question. Now, in my opinion, the do you agree or disagree kind of questions are by far the easiest types to respond to. Because all you have to do is simply choose whether you agree or choose whether you disagree, come up with two points that support that, and just flesh out your essay. I mean, it, you know, you could probably finish this portion of your task in maybe 25 minutes or 30 minutes. Okay, now let's look at some different ways that the instruction words can be delivered. So here we have, do you agree or disagree? Now, I'm not going to change uh, the background section of the question at all. I'm only going to change the instructions uh, part of the question. And you can see, you know, how this, this will change the way that we would need to respond to the essay. So, now we have, to what extent do you agree or disagree? Now again, students often get confused, and I get emails all the time that say, what do I do if my question says, to what extent do you agree or disagree? In my opinion, this portion here, to what extent, you can almost ignore it. It's just sort of complicating the way that the question says, do you agree or disagree? I've told students before that a good strategy to follow is to not try to answer in the middle of agree or disagree. So what I mean by that is don't write a response that maybe 50% is agree and 50% is disagree. Because these kinds of responses are difficult to write and it only heightens the chance that you're going to make a grammatical or a structural error in your writing. So when you get a question that says to what extent do you agree or disagree, um, I mean, unless you're really confident in your writing, I would suggest just choosing to, to write a, an argument essay as an, an agreement to the, uh, to, the, um, uh, to the argument post or a disagreement to it. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Okay, here we have choose a position and support it 
with examples. Okay, now I think this one's pretty straightforward. Here you have choose a position, which is just kind of asking you either support the idea that foreign visitors should be charged more than locals when visiting a tourist when visiting tourist attractions in a country or refute it go against this just choose one or the other and support it with examples of course okay let's continue so that would be a res th this uh, one on the screen would be an argument essay of course now let's go to our next one here what is your opinion? Support it with examples. Okay, now these kinds of questions, uh, sometimes students can see the word opinion and then they think, oh, I have to, um, you know, I, I have to write what I, what I think, but I also have to look at what some other people think. No, that's not the case at all. They're just asking you, what is your opinion? It's very clear. You don't have to write something that supports and refutes the question, no, just write what you think. You only have 40 minutes to write your essay. <clears throat> you have to write a minimum of 250 words, but I guarantee that you won't be able to write more than maybe 330 words effectively. So you really don't have that much time to, you know, start, um, you know, expanding the question. The question is only asking you, what is your opinion? Support it with examples. So, of course, if we were to be given this on our examination, we would be writing in an argument essay style. Okay, let's look at another example. How do you respond to this claim? Okay, uh, again, I hope that's clear that this should you know, you're just going to respond either by supporting it or you're going to respond by refuting it. This is not a discussion essay. This is still an argument essay. I guess in, in this case, if you were to respond in a discussion style, I, I mean, you could do that. But as I said before, the easiest way to, to write an essay, in my opinion, is to write an argument essay. So, so you, I mean, we would be best to just maybe support the, the, uh, the idea and write an argument essay in response. Okay, so that's an argument essay. Let's continue. Next one. Okay. Support this claim with examples from your own experiences. Okay, so again, uh, we're now being told to support this claim. So we're going to be writing an argument essay, but in this argument essay we do not have any choice what our position is on this opinion. Because our essay question is telling us very clearly support this claim. It's not saying do you agree or disagree or what is your position on this uh, on this claim. It's telling us support this claim. So we have to support it. Now the second part is with examples from your own experiences. Now, um, I always tell students that uh, a very easy way to make yourself sound more academic is to avoid using uh, personal pronouns to talk about your opinion. So instead of saying, I believe that, you would say something like, it is believed. Or in instead of saying, um, we as humans usually think that, you know, you, you would say that it is usually thought that. And uh, and I think that, you know, this is very effective in, in helping you sound more academic. But there are circumstances, like you see on the screen here, where you're being asked directly for your own experiences. And there's no real way to avoid using personal pronouns in this sort of case. So even though the question is telling us, you know, that we're supposed to share personal uh, experiences, uh, I encourage you to try as hard as you can to avoid, you know, falling into the trap of writing every sentence with I or with my opinion is because, you know, this makes your essay kind of sound like it's being written by a middle school student, not by a, a student that's trying to go to a Western university. Okay, so in this uh, example, 
we would be writing an argument essay and we would be allowed to use personal pronouns. Use a reasoned argument to refute this claim. Okay, so um, now here we have the word refute which means to not support or, or sort of to, to show the flaws in this argument. So of course we're going to write an argument essay that disagrees with uh, this topic. We don't have any choice on our position. The essay question has told us we're going to refute the claim. Now uh, this part here, use a reasoned argument, is just some fancy words that uh, tell us that we're going to be uh, writing an essay and we're going to be um, supporting it. I mean, reasoned, you know, you can define that as you will. It's just an easy way of saying that uh, they're looking to see some examples that support our position. So this is an argument essay and uh, we would have to disagree with the statement that we're given. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, analyze both sides of this claim before coming to a conclusion. I'll give you a few seconds to decide what kind of essay we would need to respond to with. And if you guessed a discussion essay, you would be correct. Analyze both sides of this claim before coming to a conclusion. So basically, we're being asked to look at both uh, the argument that supports this and the argument that refutes this, and then we're being asked to come to a conclusion, which is which just means to present our opinion. So this would be a discussion style of essay. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, how do opinions differ? on this subject. So here we're also going to be writing a discussion style of essay because we need to compare uh, the two the two sides that uh, you know that are opposed when when it comes to this topic. So we would present the first one the first opinion in our first supporting paragraph the second opinion in our second supporting paragraph and finally we would present our um, our personal opinion in the conclusion, our personal stance on the subject. How do opinions differ on the subject? Discussion essay. Discuss both sides of this argument. Include personal examples where necessary. Okay, of course this would be a discussion essay what would be special about this discussion essay is that we would need to include at least one personal example. Now the phrase where necessary, uh, this is usually included to, uh, to illustrate that you as the writer are probably sympathetic to one side of the argument. So your personal uh, examples may only support one side of the argument. So the personal examples that you share, they might only be in support of this position. I mean, I think it would be, you know, it's not impossible, but it would be rare that someone would have perhaps personal experiences that would support both sides of the same argument. It's possible, I guess, but... Okay, so this would be a discussion essay, and you would be using some uh, personal pronouns in your response. What are the advantages and disadvantages of putting this argument into practice? Discuss them before delivering your conclusion. Okay, so here we have advantages and disadvantages. So we're going to uh, write in a discussion essay style. We're going to make one of our supporting paragraphs the one that illustrates the advantages of um, of this argument and the second supporting paragraph is going to illustrate the disadvantages of this argument 
we're going to talk about, uh, you know, use some of our discussion sentences to talk about these. And at the end of the essay, we're going to give our opinion, our conclusion on this topic. So here you would be responding in a discussion essay style. Let's try another one. Okay, whoops. Look at all sides of this argument. I'll give you a few seconds. That would be a discussion style of response because we're looking at all sides of the argument means which means uh, the sides that support and the sides that refute. So discussion style. Using your own examples, analyze the benefits and drawbacks of this opinion. I'll let you read that to yourself. Okay, benefits and drawbacks, which just simply means the good things and the bad things, the positive points and the negative points. So, again, this would be a discussion style of essay response. Okay, and okay, that's it. So, I hope that video um, helped to clarify the instances when we want to write an argument essay and the instances when we want to write a discussion essay. Thank you for listening.